all those times you stood by me For all the truth that you made me see For all the joy you brought to my life For all the wrong that you made right For every dream you made come true For all the love I found in you I'll be forever grateful, God You're the one who held me up Never let me fall You're the one who saw me through Through it all I had been singing professionally for about three or four years in and around Montreal when I got this phone call on an early Monday morning. Allo Rachel, this is Mego, the musical director of Céline Dion. We saw you on stage last Saturday and we enjoyed your performance very much. We'd like you to join us on the next uh, world tour as a back vocalist for Céline. It will last about a year. Would you be interested? If I was interested? Of course I was interested. I mean, imagine the opportunity it is for a beginning singer. But honestly, the amazing opportunity was not only to tour with Celine. It was actually a way to make the money to fulfill my true dream. Go to Paris and join the new hip French music scene and contribute in my own humble way as a singer-songwriter in La Langue de Molière. That was my dream. So, with that in mind, of course, I went on the world tour with Celine and for almost two years, playing in dream places and living the high life. But as I had made a promise to myself to stay true to my dreams and follow my own path, I decided it was time to leave. <laughs> I knew anyways that if I didn't get out now, I might never want to leave this luxury cruise ship, but also never discover new shores. So I packed my things, pulled up my sleeves, and left. And guess who was on that very first flight off to Paris? Guess who? My French music hero of the time, MC Solar. <laughs> standing right behind me in the queue to check in. I mean, did I see the sign? I saw the sign. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, baby, baby, it's a wild world. It's hard to get by just upon a smile. Yeah, indeed. Despite all the smiles I gave, things in Paris didn't work out the way I was dreaming of. Uh, not even close. So, in resume, after almost 10 years of constant effort, 10 years of leaps of faith, 10 years of risk-taking, 10 years of non-stop belief. 10 years also of repeated refusals and broken promises and letdowns by record companies until the next hopeful opening. Not to mention the financial disaster I found myself in and the embarrassment that comes with this situation, I had no choice but to go back to Montreal.
Things started looking up again, though. My dream was starting to come true again. I found a manager, I found a record deal, and I was even announced to the media as the next big thing coming on the francophone music scene. Until life hit me with another punch. It is now 2007, and my days are spent in the dark, hoping the phone doesn't ring. I just can't face my reality anymore. Life has become unbearable. Because I've just been terribly betrayed and scammed by my manager. And I don't know if I'm more angry at him or at myself for letting this happen. Because you see, three years before that, my intuition had clearly warned me not to work with this guy clearly warned me to stay away from him. But my head, desperate and eager to see my lifelong work become a success, went ahead and accepted his offer to be my manager. Well, he managed one thing, all right, to disappear with both the money planned for my album and with my final recordings. And he was nowhere to be found. Nowhere. The album that I had worked so hard on, the album that I had sacrificed Everything for went unheard. The doors that were once opened now closed. My singing career, of course, blocked and basically finished. The pain the shame and the humiliation of the situation kept playing over and over and over in my head all night, all day. It felt I was imprisoned in a nightmare. Stone, le monde est stone. Je cherche le soleil au milieu de ma nuit. J'ai la tête qui éclate. Je voudrais seulement dormir, m'étendre sur l'asphalte et me laisser mourir et me laisser mourir. My heart and my soul, though, they were still alive. And they craved, they craved for a way out. I knew that I needed to learn how not only to listen to my intuition, but to obey it. Well, God listens to pure desires. Because <laughs> in the midst of my depression, a ray of light came to me through my angel, my mother. Her choir director offered me to be the guest vocalist for their upcoming concert. I accepted, although I really feared I would not even be able to sing anymore. 
but the power of the music pulled me through. In the choir, two young women, both lovely and luminous and adored by my mom, came to her after the concert and asked if I was pursuing a spiritual path. Oh yes, she says, and since a long time. Hmm, because we felt very strong vibrations coming from your daughter. Would she be interested in meditation? Obviously, God had managed to read between my thoughts of rage and revenge and was sending me help. I so profoundly needed it. Love, you've come to rescue me To heal my wounds and carry me home The girl's name was Oslem. She invited me to her home for the meditation session. Her calm voice led the way and suited my heart already. So, I was sitting down for a while with my eyes closed and my hands open when suddenly something wondrous started to happen. It felt, it felt like a an invisible zipper was coming down slowly from my forehead down to my feet. And then like a layer of darkness and heaviness just falling off of me. Literally like an old skin. And on that newborn skin, a gentle but powerful wind was blowing. And then all around me. And then above my head, an amazing flow of energy, like pulling up, as if reconnecting me directly back to the divine. so amazing, so safe, so comforting. I don't remember ever feeling like this in my life. I also noticed there was a profound silence in my head, within me. I felt a closeness, an intimacy with myself I had not yet known. And the peace, oh, the peace. And the amazing grace. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. I could see how everything was somewhat different around me, but mostly in me. The pain was gone. <laughs> it was gone. It's as if the past didn't even matter anymore, as if I was, it was somebody else's life. And what that man had done, it seemed like nothing 
compared to the power of my spirit. I could forgive him easily. I had struggled so much to forgive him, but I could forgive him easily because I understood that he was trapped in the thick walls of his ego, like I was, and did not know his spirit. But I had just met mine, the most beautiful encounter of my life. That state, that space, that silence, that stillness, that joy, that clarity, they became my new compass. My inner voice was clearer than ever, and my capacity to obey it was now free of obstacles. And I had hope again. I had hope again. When I learned that the Kundalini energy awakens in others, like a candle lights up another candle, I deeply understood my life purpose. God had to make me discover that true power that was inside of me first and then go out there and use it for the highest purpose. When I understood that with every cell of my body, soul and mind, things took off like a rocket. It was amazing. Right now, I don't have the time to tell you about all the amazing, miraculous turns of events that happened following this realization. But if I am standing here before you today at TEDx, <laughs> my dream, it is because I have finally succeeded in listening to my intuition and I obeyed it to the point of living a blissful and fulfilling life. If you knew how all these things, all these circumstances got resolved, you would be flabbergasted, I think, like I was, at how the universe helps you when you help it by trusting your intuition and following it. Namaste. Thank you.